Hey guys, today we're going to be replacing the door bottoms on this 51 Ford. Welcome back to Envision Prototypes. And for those who are new to our channel, my name's Nick. And you might be looking at this 51 and saying, there's something different about it. And you're right. This is a 51 that we've taken and planted over top of a 2008 Infiniti all-wheel drive chassis. Yes. So now we can call this a 5108 Infiniford. Ah, no, I don't like the name of that either. I'm trying to think of a name for this car, something cool. Not like rust bucket or turd bucket or something. So we can work on that. So as you can see, we made some changes to the exterior shape. We've, I'll get to the doors. Don't worry. I'll show you how to change those out nice, nice. Taking that roof, dropped it down. And not in the traditional sense. We didn't take and cut the posts. The door area, yes. But the main roof, we didn't touch those. We simply took those that windshield and leaned it back. Just heated things up, leaned it back and gave that a more streamlined appearance. And these red lines are indicating where we need to cut this pillar out, thinning it out, so we can incorporate two pieces of glass that are flush fit front to back, giving it a hard top appearance while still maintaining a post. Now that rear window will be urethaned in place, and this one will obviously go up and down. So the reason why those rockers and everything went was Whatever water came in here, didn't have a chance to run out, collected in there and took those rockers out, took the quarters out. When you see guys take out the post entirely, 51 Fords sit on a frame, on a full length frame. So it has enough structural strength to stop the car from flexing. But because like I said, this is a unit body, we need to maintain as much strength in this area as possible so the car doesn't fold in on itself. Speaking of that post, we had a bit of an issue in a previous episode. Not with the episode itself, but something I noticed. And that post was leaning back about 3 16ths of an inch. It didn't look bad. It wasn't an issue at the time because like I mentioned, we're gonna be taking that post and removing it, but it bothered me. So we took the car, moved it outside, got way back about 50, 75 feet, and got looking at it. And the roof looked good through there, but this area right in here, it looked weird. I couldn't put my finger on it. Went to the right side, the right side looked good. I measured both sides, right to the left. The dimensions were really close, but just the eye doesn't lie. You might be saying, well, Nick, you didn't reinforce the body well enough. Well, there was nothing to really reinforce. This whole shell was a big bowl of jelly. And whoever braced it originally when they pulled it off of the chassis, uh, it wasn't done right. So anyway, things were a bit out of whack. Where the problem came from was a big pile of lead that was in there to cover up this repair. I'll show you what they did. Now you have to understand these cars were just drivers back then. They were just normal cars that people drove. It wasn't a show car. So if it got into an accident, it went into a shop, they used a gas ax to chop a torch, to chop off the old quarter. You can see how kind of mangled it is. Place the new one over top, gas welded it. That's what they had at the time. Threw some lead in it, painted it, gave it a shoe shine and got the car out. And this, you can see a space here. It's about a quarter inch there there that's where that problem was that back of the window was dipped down it got pulled in pulled down so haven't quite finished it yet but i took the window cut it all the way out the whole thing rotated it counterclockwise welded it all back in still need to do some metal finishing but we're just about there so i'm going to take a break from that and move on to the other areas and then kind of finish that off later so just wanted to show you you know how things were done back in the day in regards to this quarter, that blue line there is indicating where we're gonna cut that quarter off. And you're gonna notice that it actually extends into the door area because we're gonna incorporate the infinity door handles into the 51's doors. And that's gonna sit just about there, this big black thing that goes in from behind as a support. The handle is all you're gonna see. And from here back, we're gonna install this channel. It's gonna contain a piece of chrome, some LED tail lights that are going to wrap around the back of the car and then up the other side. And that's going to sit right there. So we'll transition from this handle to that, keeping this top surface, because the original handle sat up here, and that was a keyhole. We're going to keep this top surface through here nice and clean without any interferences, because that's a nice reflection point that runs down the length of the car. That's going to look quite trick, and as you can see, we have some wires here. We have to plug that back into the CAN bus uh, electrical system so that the computer knows if the door is locked or unlocked and all that stuff. So let's go to the front and I'll show you what we did over there. Now back in the first or second episode when I was sitting outside kind of planning and talking about what we're going to do for this car, 
I mentioned that I wanted to give the front of it a Mustang feel. No, we're not building a Mustang. We're not converting the front of this Ford into a Mustang. All we're doing is kind of giving it a flavor of a Mustang while maintaining the 51's proportions. So what we have here is a dividing line where the fender is going to be cut off and there'll be a flange where the lower section of the valance bolts up to there and there. You can actually see the signal light is down here on this one with some trim clips and this one's smooth with the signal light over there. So they're different years. Now I can't remember which years these fenders came from. It doesn't matter in this case, but I'm curious if you guys know, throw it down in the comments. Let me know which one belongs to what year of car shoebox for it. I uh, appreciate that. And what this arrow is here, if you've been looking at this, I didn't bother creating a complete front splitting kind of feature. I just mocked it up out of a piece. That's going to be the profile. And when we form it up out of sheet metal, I'll continue it through. It'll taper down, kind of looking like a 51, but different. And down below, we've got the scoop. We'll throw in some driving lights. And that should look pretty cool. Now, these corners, we'll have to fabricate them up, shape them up. As you can see, we're coming up into the hood with this front opening. Uh, there's a whole bunch of little pinholes through here. And rather than repair them, I'm being lazy. I was going to cut them away, create a flange, return in. And by moving up, we're also minimizing the height of that hood, bringing it down a bit because it, it, the curve is nice, but it looks a bit high, especially through here. The 50s, when they had that center bezel, that took away a lot of that height. But in this case, I have the bezel, but we're not going to be including it. So it should look pretty good once we're done. Uh, a little bit of work involved because we have to create two front corners. We'll have to fill these areas in, trim away the corner of that fender, that one over there, kind of reshape the, those parts. I'm not sure if we're going to create a secondary scoop here or not, kind of a dividing feature. Uh, it might be a bit too much, too busy. So simplicity is key. The simpler you keep a design, the more timeless it is. If you start throwing all kinds of features and whatever's into it, it's going to look busy and it's going to look dated. But as for today, we're going to focus on getting the door bottom replaced. And the reason we're starting with this door, rather than any other part on the car, in terms of restructuring and preparing to kind of rebuild everything, is because this is about the only part that hasn't been turned to mush. I welded in some little blocks of 3 16 material around the perimeter of this door to kind of gap everything. You probably won't have to do this with your door bottom repair because your car is probably in a lot better shape than what we're starting with. But this is what we had to do to make sure all the gaps were consistent all the way around the top, everything's clamped. This is clamped up to here, from here down, it just goes out the window. You can see how much that quarter panel dives in where it meets the door there, that, that's crazy. So we're gonna have to take, and when we create the new quarter panel, we'll have to bend a flange that brings that leading edge up and out. This curvature is still good, but it's just the level is wrong. Now these trim holes, we're gonna fill them later, uh, remove that clip and this clip here, get rid of all that. The skin is not too bad. It's actually really nice in this area. The problems start down below and as you get closer to the bottom, it just gets worse. And I'll show you why. And you probably won't believe it until you see it. So let's get cutting and get that off. Now here you can just take a zip blade and cut through. But with the edges, you take a grinder blade, a thin one, and you grind through the hem of the material. Basically you've taken the door material and hemmed it over the back of the structure to pinch it. Well, you want to take and grind off this material here allowing the outside skin to release from the hem on the backside. So we're going to take and grind that very carefully up to the structure and no further. And same here, up to the structure and no further. And you, as you're grinding, you'll see it start to separate. So we'll uh, see if we can capture that on video. You'll notice that once we cut this off, there is no structure inside. Uh, that's all been cut away. But there is a bit of a hem here yet and a bit of a hem here that's still kind of intact. So I want to preserve all that and uh, remove that bottom, make up a new piece, get it installed.
not sure if you can see, but I'm not going any further because I see separation right there. That's pretty warm. And a little bit there, so we're, we're pretty close. I have to go down a little bit more without hitting the rocker. Kind of take that off. Then we can start peeling this skin. There we go. So you see, boom. See how easy that was? It just fell off. Boom. Now the ham on the back side has to be removed. So you can do that when you open the door. For me, I have to get a chisel and drive it off and peel it back. Because I can see these doors are welded shut. And there we go. One bottom removed. If you don't have a replacement panel, don't throw this out. Don't bend it up and twist it out of shape because this is going to be your template. And I'll show you how we can use this to create a new piece. See this undercoating material that was applied? This is factory, but a lot of times guys will just coat the inside of a panel thinking they're protecting it. But you can see it cracks, opens up, and holds moisture. That's actually media blasting, media blasting material there. And it holds moisture, and that's what causes that rust hole from this side to go out towards the outside. So that's what caused that right there. And just wherever this stuff let go is gonna cause those kind of issues. And you see that looks good there, but there's a slight crack in there. And more than likely, we're gonna find a bunch of rust in the back. I'm gonna get that all cleaned up, grind it out, let the dust settle, and then we can, oh yeah. See, we have no door bottom here, it's gone. We cut that away when we made the rockers up. So we're gonna to have to take and form up new pieces. But right now, I'm gonna get the outside piece installed, clamped, and once this piece is fitting well and looking good, then we'll take, remove this, because it won't be welded yet. We'll go ahead in another video and create the structural bottom of the door to hold the skin as well as restructure that door. You see, that's all undercoating stuff. And we have to take and remove that from the inside of the door. Now, the other thing is really important. If you have glass in your door, and if at all possible, remove the glass from the door before going and doing this work. If you can't remove it, put the window all the way up, tape it up with cardboard both sides, make sure that it does not get splattered when you're cutting this material off with the grinder because it will ruin your glass. It'll create a bunch of pitting, and it'll be a nightmare to look through from the inside, outside, whatever. It's gonna be, it'll destroy the glass is what I'm trying to say. Cover it up, remove it, but don't grind with the glass exposed. So anyway, I'll get that cleaned up and then we'll go ahead and make a new uh, door bottom. If you bought one, well, you're ahead of me, but you have to make sure that it extends up past where the material is rotted away. I'm drawing the line as to how far I wanna replace this door. I can wheel up a whole new door skin if I want to, but that takes time and I can just replace the bottom just as effectively by filling in these holes and having a nice door at the end. So what you saw me doing there was removing the paint primer and only the paint or primer using a special disc called a paint stripping disc. Paint stripping disc. Uh, you can find them on the Jungle website or wherever. Uh, go to your local jobber, they should have them. Uh, it's not a stone abrasive wheel, it's basically a plastic hard composite that takes the paint off without thinning the metal. That's the last thing you wanna do is thin the metal out of your door so that it'll make it more difficult to weld or to the point that it's, you know, it damages that metal. Get it down to a bare metal surface, make sure both sides are clean so that you can get your dolly in from the back. Sometimes they have that tar. Well, we don't have any more tar. It's all been taken off. We stripped it off. And even when you're doing this to strip the paint off, keep moving. Don't stop in one spot and heat the metal up because this does create friction and it'll warp your door panel. You don't want to warp that. Because right now we have a nice straight cut, straight door panel. You start heating up certain areas and it's going to create waves. You don't want to create waves. And while I was grinding this, 
I've been looking at this quarter panel and we're gonna just remove it. It doesn't do anything for us right now. Our B pillar is welded on the inside, that's solid, not going anywhere. I got the zip blade out, might as well take and cut that off as well. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this blue line is the center line of that channel. It's gonna run down the length of the car. The root of the channel is three quarters of an inch wide, so this three quarter inch tape will suffice to lay that out. 19 millimeter for those who follow the metric system. And there we go. Now there is, cut there. I'm gonna cut down that Sharpie line. The Sharpie line, the Sharpie is pretty worn down. So that's one eighth of an inch at that point. There, and by cutting it down the Sharpie line, that'll give us enough wiggle room to locate that channel properly. Uh, we might have to cut one more time just above that, but that'll be just to follow the scribe line for the channel. Uh, right now, I wanna get rid of this, get it out of the way. Uh, this clearance issue here between the tire and the, well, the rim and this fender edge, we're gonna have to take and swell these quarters just a little bit in this area just to allow us enough clearance so the tire slides up and down without cutting up the rubber by rubbing on the metal. Some people will cut an arc out just to allow that tire enough room. I want this to kind of look, kind of look like a 51 Ford Custom. We're gonna keep the quarter panel with this same shape over the wheel because it really fits the wheel quite well. Uh, it's gonna sit about here once the car is loaded down, but I wanna keep this shape. So uh, we're just gonna take and recreate the quarter panel with this shape with a slight swell outward and that'll give us a clearance for that. You know, we're cutting a lot of this car up. You know, it looks good, but you know, there's, there are problems in it. So it's a lot easier rather than create a piece here, create a piece there, create a piece there. And with this change here, we might as well change the whole quarter panel. So let's get cutting. That really gives a whole new meaning to open concept. There's not much left. Top section of the car. Okay. All the upper section has been reinforced and welded. So all we have is a bit of movement here. I feel some undercoating on the backside. We have to take and address that, scrape it off, clean it off. But uh, we'll leave that for another day. Check this out. This is the original quarter panel. And this is what they welded in, in its place. So they basically took that, drove it inside and uh, laminated over top. This is the old window track in here. We're gonna get rid of that. Yeah, we can actually cut the whole thing off and recreate everything from there down. I'm doing this on weekends and after hours. You know, I can't devote that much time to this project. Right now, let's get back onto the doors, fabricate a new piece, shape it up and get it mocked up. If you have a fresh bottom that you purchased from whatever to put on the bottom of the door, you're way ahead. But if you have to fabricate one, this is how we're gonna do it. And take the piece that we just finished cutting off and make sure we have enough material on both sides. Now, when we cut the edges of the door off, there's about an eighth of an inch material. So we're gonna add the thickness of a marker and then we have to add half an inch. I'll show you how we do that. I'm just, this is why it was crucial not to cut too far in because by adding that thickness of marker, that's basically the thickness of the sheet metal that rolls around the edge of the door. And now we know the curvature and we know how much to add plus half an inch. And on the bottom here, we're gonna add again, half an inch like that. I have to clean that bottom edge up like so. And on top, we're gonna add, eh, Let's see, quarter inch at the top. Because the top, we have to butt the top with what's on the door. So we'll add that quarter inch and cut it off on that line. And as for the ends, we use some half inch tape. 
factory had about half inch of material on the ends. So using a half inch that moved that line out, we cut on that red line. Now this is the important part. You have to find out or determine or indicate which is the inside. Because if you bend it the wrong way, you just form up the wrong side of the car. So this is in and that's top. That's knee. Okay. So now we have to start giving this some shape. Uh, the bottom has to be rolled up, the ends have to be rolled up, and then eventually rolled over. Now, when it comes to rolling these flanges, if you don't have a brake, say for the long flange, you strike yourself a line with the uh, straight edge, if the bottom of the door is straight, of course, or whatever line you have, then you take your hammer and dolly, set up your dolly on the line, we'll pretend there's a line there, and you roll the flange up. I'm not gonna do this because I've shown this in other videos on how to use simple tools to create door flanges and whatever. If you have a chunk of steel like this, it has a nice straight edge, that'll work out really well to set it up on the line and roll it over. But like I said, in this case, we're just gonna use the brake, bend it up, and then uh, to give this a little bit of shape, we're gonna use uh, the English wheel and give us some shape this way because the bottom of the door, does have some curvature to it. You know? Let's go break this. Okay, give this a slight break. By me giving that panel a little crease at the bottom, the initial break, it didn't take it all the way over. It created some stiffness within this panel, allowing me to wheel it a little bit easier. Otherwise, you're gonna get a bunch of this happening. I think that's going to be it. So now we're going to take this bottom flange, take it all the way over and address the ends, bring them up. And that's where I'm going to use the hammer and dolly to bring that up. I've used a tipping wheel, but I'll show you with the hammer and dolly. Why not? When you look down the side of the door, the side of the door has a convex shape outward. By bending this in the brake, it's created that funny shape. So what we're going to do is take and flatten this flange out, not closing it all the way down, just flatten it out a little bit to give us, to allow the panel to curve the other way. You'll also want to cut the corners on an angle so that when the two flanges come together, they meet at about a 45 degree angle. Just like that. By doing that, we can now bend the panel outward to what we need. Now for the fun part, the ends. We've got to bring those up as well. So we've rolled it up, but as you can see, we have a very soft radius. So we have to take and flatten that out. Just take your time at this step because the better you get this to fit the line you have, the better it's going to fit on the car. With this in this position, we can still unroll it to a degree or tighten it up if we need to. If we tighten it down all the way, 
you won't move it. So right now we just want to fit it onto the car. It is round, yes, but that will tighten up and we can still move it if we need to. Now that we have the panel relatively close, it's not there yet, we have ways to go. I want to take and start fitting it to the actual door opening. Now, these structural areas, we didn't mess anything up there by grinding away too much. If this was rusted away, you'd have to fix this. But in most cases, these areas hold up. It's the bottom seam that lets go and rots out. So there's that piece of material that was hemmed across on the back. There's a little spot weld there, so you'd have to deal with all that trying to pry it off. This works quite well when you just cut the end and then peel it off like that. So with those pieces removed off the back, we have a nice consistent thickness here, both sides. We can take our replacement panel and slide it up into place. And what we can do is slide it up past onto this material here. I don't feel like trimming this up, this is nice. We can trim away the door and it'll be a lot more accurate fitment. A little bit tricky to get it on. There we go. Because you're kind of going over top of the material. We're not going to do that. We want a butt joint. We don't want an overlap. Overlaps create problems. You can't finish them. And uh, there. You can't hammer and dolly them, and they just they don't work out too well. So I've got that up into place. We have our material there. It's looking good. There we go. And it's consistent. The space is consistent all the way down the bottom of the door. So now we can go ahead and scribe that. Like a glove. And this part here can be trimmed away. I have no problem cutting this away. In trying to determine or cut off that edge in relation to this one, it'd be a lot more difficult. You can see how easy this was. Just slide it up into place, trim this off, and uh, then we can go ahead and get that panel mounted. I'm not going to say welded because we still have a bunch of work in here to do, and that'll be part two of this video series. And I'm cutting to the bottom edge of that line that we created. If we go to the top, well, that gap at the bottom will just increase some more. And I want 316, so. I drifted a little bit back here, it happens. I'll show you how you can address that. Because to take off that hair amount with a pair of snips is impossible. Uh, you'd have to cut in and then you go them too far and it, you just mess it up. So we'll get to that in a second. Now to address this area where I drifted here a little bit, kind of came down only for that far, but that's gonna affect the fitment of our exterior replacement piece. So we take a flat, thin disc, not the zip blades because you don't want to thin those out anymore. Just grab a grinding disc that's flat and grind upward, leveling that out. We have to take and address that little bit of rust there that I've exposed. You'll never get all that out. It's physically impossible unless you pull the skins off the structure, disassemble the structure from the structure, like there's hinge brackets and all kinds of stuff. You know, there's gonna be rust inside your doors. You, with a classic car like this, with an older car, you'll never get it out. To acid dip, that's a whole different thing. With acid, if you acid dip the vehicle, 
the acid will actually get into all those little crevices and seams and things, unless it's really washed out. And even when you wash it, uh, it does still creep out of hems. We've seen it. It's a disaster to have the car freshly painted. And about a year later, the stuff starts coming out and you can see all the little blisters along all the hems. So that's gonna fit up right in there like that. Like that. I have to touch up a little bit over here. It's not fitting up exactly. I want this gap to be minimal, if not touching. So uh, there's a little bit that has to be ground right there. Now with these pieces that you create, or if you buy them for bare metal, clean these, wash them, clean them, sand them, and epoxy prime them. I'll put up a card at the top over there, and I'll show you how to prepare sheet metal for epoxy primer because you don't want to just to slide this in place and have rust start creeping out of these areas. We have our 3 16 gap. Now that's kind of flopping around because there's no structure. I'm liking that a lot. Very good. Uh, I might trim up a little bit over there. If you fit it a hundred times, fit it the hundred first time to make sure that it's where it has to be. Because once you weld it, that's it. If you're not happy with it. A little too high. Right there. So that's as far as I'm going to take this panel right now. Yeah, it's a little bit wobbly. And this panel is dished in. But as soon as we start tacking and working the tacks, the welds, uh, things will solidify and we'll get that curvature restored in the door. Until then, we can't go much further. So I'm gonna bring you guys in and show you how well things are fitting up. Okay, so if you guys can close one eye and kind of sight down the door, you can see how tight the tolerance is between the two pieces. Like, it's right on. I can just bring them up together a little bit of something there. We'll adjust that. Oh, this is a bit high here. There. So, and this is being pushed in, so that has to come out. But you can see how well this has to come up. Everything's fitting up. So, there we go. And our bottom gap is 3 16 so that's all good. Okay, so all our gaps are good, just double checking everything. The end is flush, this end is almost there. We're gonna weld this up once I've got the interior structure formed up. I hate to leave you guys like that, but it just makes it a lot easier without the skin in place and the door being held in place for me to create that inner piece, locate it, and then install this. Now, with you guys, if you're replacing a door bottom and your bottom structure is good, you don't have to worry about that. As long as you have access from the inside so you can hammer and dolly your weld, you're all set. And like I mentioned, get that glass out of, out of the way. Quick tip, make sure that your curvature outward is uh, consistent. You don't want to dive in and then hope you can hammer it out. It doesn't work out too well. You'll create a bunch of waves and that's not the way you want to do it. And spread your tacks out consistently and evenly. You don't want to start at one end and weld or try and weld to the other end because eventually these two panels will actually, those welds will shrink and pull these panels up past each other, then you're stuck. You wanna distribute your heat, don't build up too much heat too fast. You can MIG this, you can TIG it, whatever you, whatever you have at hand. Uh, pop rivets don't work because we're doing a butt joint. If anything, wait for the next video before you get started on your door skin and uh, we'll have the structure done up as well as the, um, probably get that front fender section created get that lined up to make sure that everything works together here this recorder not too much of an issue but it's these pieces here that i want to make sure align properly so uh, we're gonna leave this off at this point catch you in the next one guys thanks for watching and if you like what you saw give us a thumbs up if you have any comments or questions throw them down below take care